And then that doesn't have to be a very complicated piece of legislation. Instead, what happened? I'll tell you the story of what happened. At 3 o'clock in the morning, this legislation has been drummed up and written up, not in committees, but by a bunch of staffers who work for Nancy Pelosi. At 3 o'clock in the morning, there's a 300-page amendment to an 1,100-page bill. It was passed by the Democrats in the committee. And uh, then what you have to do with 300 pages of amendment, you have to start sticking that into the other 1,100 pages. The bill was brought up on the floor for debate. And while they're debating it, the clerk up in front is trying to add these 300 pages of amendments to the bill. And we started to have some fun. I and mean, what else did you do? Because we didn't have the votes. And we started to say, well, I'd like to read a copy of the bill. Is there a copy of the bill in the chamber? Uh, Madam Speaker, I just had a parliamentary inquiry. Could I see a copy of the bill? Well, so the, 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 the gal was, was standing in the speaker thought it was kind of funny, too. She said, well, you know, we don't have a copy. We're, well, the clerk is still busy trying to get the 300 pages of amendments <laughs> in the bill. And so here we are debating the bill receiving a copy of the House floor. And it's the biggest tax increase in the history of our country. And ironically, this Congressman Aiken, my buddy I see, Congressman Bill Lennon, sitting over here, he is, he's the only one that wore out his bill button more than I did when we were state legislators <laughs> together. This is the I hate tax increases, but you know the worst part of this bill is not the tax increases, believe it or not. It's the tremendously intrusive nature of the bill and regulating all kinds of details in our lives. But we didn't see though how much that was bad until we get to the final time for talking about the bill, because no one's had a chance to read it or look at it in that much detail. And our leader, John Boehner, gets out of the floor and he used the privilege that's never been used this way before. And that is that when you're the leader, you have you can have time to close to make a comment. You're the last speaker speaking against this bill that's being proposed. And because he's the leader, that is the top Republican, the courtesy is they don't gavel him down and cut his time off. So he walks to the floor with 1,400 pages of bills with all these colored tabs in them, and the Democrats knew they were in trouble. And he starts reading through page by page. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? And he starts reading this bill. As you start to read it, you go, oh my goodness. You know, it's, it's talking about the fact that you've got to have an electrical power outlet in your garage for your electric car. What we're talking about is you're going to have a carbon footprint for your house. And you can't put a wing on your house unless you can prove that it's, it's, uh, your, it doesn't increase your carbon footprint to put this addition in your house. I mean, we're talking about the federal government getting into local buildings. That's the kind of stuff that's in this bill. So John's reading page after page of this bill, and the more he reads, you can just see the other side is squirming because there's all of this junk in there. And they're not too proud of it. They promise they're going to vote for it. They take the vote, and of course, it's overwhelmingly Democrats in favor of it, and Republicans voting no. Now, now, my point is, first of all, the worst part of the bill is the intrusive nature of it. When CEO of the Congressional Budget Office scores the bill, what they're going to say about the bill is going to cost this many, you know, the taxes in under $787 billion. That's a fair amount of cash, by the way. Um, they're going to say, well, this is what it's going to cost. What they never factor in there is what you're going to have to pay. Try to comply with all this garbage, okay? And uh, so that's never calculated in the bill. So this was one of these do-it-in-the-dark-of-night bills. Now, why, you would ask? After the Congress early in the year, and unanimously, Republicans and Democrats said we're going to give 48 hours for people to look over the bill before we vote on it. Everybody in agreed you need at least a couple of days to read over 1,400 pages. It's not that you read every page, but you, there are sections you see before you have staffers helping. You kind of go through to get the sense of what it is. But instead of doing what everybody agreed to do, we passed it essentially what was passed in the dark of night. It's a lot easier to pass something if nobody knows what's in it. <laughs> See, that, that's people, politicians, are, they're, they make you bad. They're not totally stupid. And they go, nobody knows what's in it. You do it quick enough, pat, 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 hurry up, hurry up. It's global warming time. And you pass it in a hurry, it's easier to get through. And that really sets up the second discussion that we'll have. And that is, why do you want to hurry up on the health care bill? But again, yeah, because the people don't know what's in it. It's going to be easier to pass. It didn't work so much the second time, fortunately. But the captain tax, while it went through the House, let me tell you, the senators are very, very 
uh, not too eager to jump in this morning's test. And this is a Thank you. 